Greetings students. Today I'm going to talk to you about the historical context for the book you're going to be reading of Mice and Men. So today we're going to talk about the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl, which were both major events in United States history. But first let me introduce myself. I'm Mr. Moeller and I'm the U.S. History teacher here at Cristo Rey. I'm in the Homework Center Tuesdays and Fridays and I can help you out with your history homework, religion homework, or English homework. So stop on by to see me. But enough about that. Let's talk about this book of Mice and Men. Now, no book is written in a vacuum. That means that when books are written, they reflect what was going on in the past and the present at the time that they were written. And John Steinbeck, who's the author of the book of Mice and Men, was famous for a style known as realism, which, as you may think, depicts real events, meant to kind of show reality through literature. And so today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the reality of the Great Depression. Now before the Great Depression was a period of time called the Roaring Twenties, and this was a great time in American history. After the First World War, there was an economic boom where consumption, the buying of things, was way up. There were new factories, new products, new jobs, the automobile became very popular, and also the stock market where people can buy and sell pieces of companies created a lot of wealth for the country. Unfortunately, people spent in excess, and how they afford, af managed to afford this was they took out credit, just like your standard credit card that people have today, where somebody loans you money to buy things. Well, the problem with having money loaned to buy things is that you're going to have to pay that money back. In this period, of, this period of time in the 1920s was known as the age of play, where people were crazy about things like baseball the movies, going to see musical performances, going camping. And all of this led to a situation where Americans during the 1920s were not prepared for the harsh realities that would follow. All this prosperity in the 20s led to too much production. I could get into the economics of this, but we can save that for when you guys are juniors. But whenever you make too much of something, that leads to layoffs. Because if people don't buy things, then no one needs to make more stuff. And if I don't need to make more stuff, I don't need to pay you money to make stuff. And so a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. And when these jobs are lost, that means that people are not going to be able to pay back the credit and the loans that they had taken out to buy a lot of these things during the 1920s. Businesses as well are not going to be able to pay back their loans. So this is going to cause a chain reaction that's going to lead to massive unemployment and the loss of money. Then in 1929, the stock market crashed in New York City. And the stock market crash led to even more businesses failing, and some people who had invested money lost their entire life savings, or large amounts of money that they would not be able to get back. And this started the Great Depression. And the Great Depression was a worldwide economic crisis where there were massive amounts of unemployment and debt. In fact, by 1933, a full quarter of the U.S. population, 25% of people, were unemployed. Imagine if a quarter of people were out of work today. But the problem with the Great Depression was that at the time, there were no safety net programs. There was no unemployment insurance, no social security, no food stamps. There was nothing to provide for people when they fell in these hard times. So when people fell into poverty, they were left literally with nothing because there was no assistance from any of these government programs that we have today. And so in the United States, for a long period of time, from about 1929 all the way up to 1942, in the start of the Second World War, there was economic and emotional devastation throughout all of the United States. And these conditions were terrifying. There was a lot of terror and panic as people who had had jobs, had savings, had houses, lost all of these things. This even resulted in a spike in suicide rates as people seeing no way out decided to even take their own lives rather than try to survive this economic crisis. There was massive unemployment, money loss, and somebody who had been wealthy one day, or at least middle class, could be in poverty the next. And there was also starvation in the United States, where there was plenty of food, but the problem is that people didn't have money to pay for it. So though there was food, nobody could afford it. And so there was want in the midst of plenty in the United States. Terrible conditions that these people were facing. And some of you might be asking, well, why didn't these unemployed people just get 
another job? And the answer is that the opportunities dried up. A big theme in John Steinbeck's Book of Mice and Men is the idea of the American dream. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about the Great Depression and the American dream. I love this image because it kind of shows the contrast between people standing in a line to try to get soup and the ideal of the American way with a high standard of living. But what the American dream is, it's the idea that there is opportunity in the United States, that there is opportunity for success no matter where you come from, no matter how you were born, that there is an opportunity that if you work hard, you're smart, you have skills and you have good values and are good men and women for others, that life could be better and richer and fuller to everyone. And you have opportunity according to your ability, your work, and your achievement. And this idea of the American dream is still around and has been around for most of American history. But during the Great Depression, the idea of the American dream was largely shattered. These dreams of prosperity ended with the stock market crash, where people who had become wealthy by investing suddenly were left with nothing. Where debt had led to repossessions. People had taken out loans to buy houses, farms, cars, all these things, and when they were unable to pay those loans, those homes were taken away from them by the banks who had loaned them the money. So there are repossessions and homelessness becoming a widespread problem in these early 1930s. And the high levels of unemployment also kind of broke this idea of the American dream. That it's emotionally devastating to be unemployed. People started questioning their self-worth, whether or not they were good enough, but all this boils down to the fact that there were simply not opportunities in the United States the way that there was before the Depression. And really, people looked around and saw no way of achieving the dream. So the American dream, for a lot of people, became the American nightmare of simply trying to survive without a job and without money. And so it's kind of an interesting situation. We have large numbers of people who want to work, want to work hard, but simply there are no jobs for them to work. Homelessness becomes a problem. The sight of people sleeping on benches becomes commonplace. Soup lines and bread lines, where people would line up to try to get some charity so they could feed themselves or their families, were also rampant in American cities. What you should notice about this line is that a lot of these people are very well dressed. They don't look like regular homeless or unemployed people. They look like people who had previously, very recently, had jobs, had nice clothes, had all these things. But now, in the Great Depression, these things are gone. There was also the development of shanty towns, where communities of homeless people would just build shacks out of whatever material they could find, and they called these shack villages Hoovervilles, after the present Herbert Hoover, who many people blamed for the Great Depression. And so these shanty towns cropped up. And the streets are full of bums, begging for money. But are these people really bums? And in the song, Brother Can You Spare a Dime, that was written during this time, the singer in the song points out the fact that many of these people begging for money, asking for a dime, are veterans of World War I. They're unemployed workers who had built the railroads and built skyscrapers, but they were all now unemployed looking for jobs, and simply there was just no opportunities even for hardworking people in the United States. Here's a picture of a man that kind of illustrates this point, that people would take to the street with signs saying they don't want charity, they want jobs. But this opportunity is just simply not there. And in the American West, another crisis strikes that makes this Great Depression even worse. And that crisis was known as the Dust Bowl. And what the Dust Bowl was, it was a major drought Drought is when it doesn't rain, and so major drought, no rain, combined with over-farming, which had ruined soil, because if you grow too many crops in a certain area, it'll use up all the nutrients, the soil turned to dust. In the summertime, I'm sure you see this as well, where dirt that doesn't have water on it, hasn't rained, turns into dust, and sometimes it blows up. But in this case, you had massive dust storms that stalk the American West, and destroyed millions of acres of farmland. 
And those millions of acres of farmland represented hundreds of thousands of farms and hundreds of thousands of families. And without those farms, these families really had nowhere to go. An image of one of these dust storms, you get a sense of how big these dust storms were and how easily they could destroy the farmland that they went over. Again, these dust storms would bury farmland, bury houses, destroy those things. And so these farmers couldn't grow anything on these farms. And even if they could grow stuff, because people didn't have a lot of money to buy food, they couldn't really sell these crops for enough money to make their mortgage payments, to make their payments on their farm so they wouldn't lose it. So a lot of these people are going to be forced to leave, and farms are going to be foreclosed on, causing these people to really have nowhere to go. So the goal goes from being a landowner, from having your own farm and your own little piece of the American dream, to simply trying to survive. Here's a picture of a family that had been kicked off of their farm by this dust storm trying to survive. You should notice that incredible amount of poverty, can't even afford shoes for the children. And so another big theme in Of Mice and Men is the idea of isolation and loneliness in the Great Depression. And this is a true thing that during this time, families were split up because a family could not always afford to feed all of their children. And so families would split up. Maybe one parent would move to a different area to try to find work, to bring money back. And a lot of young people your age had to make some very tough decisions. And so young people your age would actually become hobos. And what a hobo is, is somebody who rides trains from town to town looking for work or a meal. And you would make the decision to leave your family because simply they could not afford to feed you. And you thought that at the age you were at, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old, you could fend for yourself. So you made that hard decision. But when you made that decision to leave, to go from place to place looking for work or food, this means that you're giving up your roots, your home, your friends, your family. You're leaving all that behind. And so there's an isolation associated with this, that really this survival, you are on your own. And so companionship that developed amongst these travelers and these hobos became very important, the kind of companionship that George and Lenny are going to share in your book. Because all they really have is each other, having given up everything to try to survive this Great Depression. And so these hobos would jump on rails, and these hobos would set up camps where basically groups of these people would try to band together to look out for one another to try to survive in these difficult conditions. Then during this time, you also have a large number of migrant workers in the American West. And what migrant workers are, are people who go from place to place to try to find work. Usually, these migrant workers would work on farms. So they would try to get to different areas of the West as different crops came in to be harvested. And these migrant workers would oftentimes just walk from farm to farm and ask, do you have any work for me? Do you have any work for me? George and Lenny in your book of Mice and Men are migrant workers who are going from place to place looking for work, trying to save up money. And for these migrants, they have no land. Most of them have no money because in many of these situations, they're working for just enough money to buy food. And ultimately, they will have no opportunity. They are stuck in this cycle of having to wander around looking for any work they can find. And most of these people are going to go to California because California becomes one of the places in the Great Depression where a lot of workers will go to find work in these large farms in California. But this migrant system is very exploitative. No, sorry, exploitative. And desperate people, like these migrant workers who are looking for their next meal, they can be taken advantage of. And so these desperate people are exploited with poor conditions, very low pay, sometimes no pay at all for very hard labor. As you can see, oftentimes they weren't even given the tools that they needed. And so this is a very tough system, a tough life that your characters George and Lenny find themselves in. So kind of a last little theme from the Great Depression that makes it into your book is the idea of power and powerlessness. 
And it raises the idea that does money equal power? And during this Great Depression, money and power become very, very linked. Because desperate people with no money and not sure where their next meal are going to come from, they're very vulnerable people, and they can be exploited and taken advantage of. And in this time, if you don't have money, you don't have land, you don't control your own destiny. You don't control what happens to you. So it becomes very difficult to take care of yourself and even more difficult to take care of others like your family. Depression takes away the ability for many people to buy land. You're going to see that come up in your book, that the characters are going to just be looking for opportunity. And ultimately, it's the idea that during this time, there's not a lot of opportunity in this land that is supposed to be the land of opportunity. So that very briefly is the world that George and Lenny are finding themselves in. They find themselves in a very difficult situation where the prime goal is survival. But that's contrasted against this idea of the American dream, that life should be richer, fuller, and that people should have opportunities to achieve that dream. Thank you. So hopefully this lecture was helpful, and hopefully it maybe gives you guys a little bit better idea about the world you're going to be reading about in the Book of Mice and Men. If you have any questions about this time, want to know more about anything, please direct your questions to your teacher and they can pass them along to me. Thank you. And enjoy reading of Mice and Men by John Stein.